Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? Well, I don't know if it's late or if it's early. I was just sitting here contemplating just staying up. Um, it is currently 5.42 a.m. I, uh, we went out to dinner. I'll talk about this in just a second, but we went out to dinner for Alex's Abuela's birthday. It was her 89th birthday, and um, we had such a great time. And when we came home, I was so tired, you guys, um, that I went to bed... Alex is going to a wedding tonight with his friend, and so he had to take, like, his suit and stuff to get some meetings today. To his meetings, because he's leaving straight from there to go to uh, this wedding. And so he was, like, trying on his suit and getting the suit ready and all that kind of stuff. And, um, so I was laying there in bed, and I started watching Scream because I'm going to see the screen panel today and I'm so excited about it and I literally watched I don't know five minutes of it if even that and I turned it off I had it like on my phone on the table next to me and I said I'm just gonna lay down for an hour and he said okay and um I, so I fell asleep at 11 and then at like one o'clock Alex woke me up, and he was like, babe, babe, he was like, you still have to vlog. He was like, you overslept your vlog. <laughs> and I said, just 10 more, I was so cozy. The dogs were all, like, cuddled around me. And I said, just 10 more minutes. I'm just gonna sleep for 10 more minutes. And then the next thing I know, he's like, babe, it's five o'clock. You need to wake up and do your vlog. And I was like, okay, and I got up, and I was like, just 10 more minutes, <laughs> just 10 more minutes. And I laid there for like 10 minutes, and then, um, the dogs had to go outside, so I got up and I took the dogs outside, and yeah, and now I am vlogging, so I'm up, like, which is weird, I'm, like, awake, but I have to leave the house, well, I'm meeting Melissa and Jason there, and, um, so they're getting there at, like, 11.30, and with parking and everything, I sh that means they're gonna leave here at, like, 10.45, which I need to leave here about 10.45 too, which means I need to start getting ready at about 10 o'clock, in all honesty, um, so I can get my coffee and stuff, which is in four hours, plus I also wanted to make some videos before I left to go down there. So I'm like, I might as well just stay up. Like, I'm kind of like awake right now, you know? So I do think that I'm just gonna kind of stay up now. Yeah, I think that's the decision I made. I feel really rested. And then when I come home, I can take a nap, you know, after we go out to eat or whatever, and then maybe do a live stream tomorrow night or something like that. Alex said he's gonna be out really late, That like the wedding party is like, the so the reception is like at one place, and then it goes to like another place, and then he's going out afterwards. So he'll be home late tomorrow night. Um, so, and then Sunday, we're just gonna go to brunch and watch movies around the house. Um, so that'll be relaxing. I wanted to finish Orange is the New Black this weekend, but I'm not, I think I have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I have six episodes left. It's so sad this season. I just like am having such a hard time finishing it. So anyway, in all honesty, I do not know how long this vlog is gonna be. And I know that's kind of like, haha, we always say that, but like really, I don't know. Um, I really would like a coffee. I have a little bit left from, are you guys ready? So I got the new Starbucks mug, look. It came in the mail today. I bought this off of eBay. I paid like, okay, now let me just tell you I'm a little pissed about this, right? So I ended up paying $45 plus shipping and handling for this. I wanted it so bad. And um, I looked on the bottom, the Starbucks tag was on the bottom. It was $18.95, you guys for this cup, and I paid $45 for it. But I have to say, like, when I went through the store and they told me that, like, the, like, the studs and stuff are falling off of it, they're not. Like, it's really sturdy, and it's really nice. The thing around this is kind of coming off a little bit, but you don't really notice it. So yeah, that came in the mail today. And then two hats that I ordered came in the mail today. Um, 
to like trucker hats. They don't fit my head very well though. I hate to buy trucker hats unless I try them on in person because I never know if they're gonna fit or not. They weren't expensive. One was for like the state of Indiana and the other one was like for the state of Montana because I found this website that has all like this cute uh, Montana stuff on it. I actually found it because Daniel Prada was in Montana to like Recepa's boyfriend and he had this hat on and I loved this hat. It just had like Montana on it. It had like this, um, I actually, this was one of the hats I got. It was just like a trucker hat and then it had like this, uh, what do you call it? Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Badge, not really badge. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, I don't know, but it had this thing on it. I don't know, I can't think of what it's called. Um, you know, that you like sew on, or that you like, or that you iron on, or that you sew on. But anyway, <coughs> it said Montana, and it had like this cool design on it, like of like the Montana like mountains, with like the sun in the background, or the moon. And so I got that hat. It was like 20 something. And then um, I got this one that has from Indiana that has like, it's just like a gray hat. And then it has like Indian, like the Indiana state sign right here. I thought I could rep my own state, you know? So apparently every state has its own website of like kind of cool merchandise. Um, and I didn't know that. So I like that, that's cool. So anyway, yeah, so that came in the mail today. That stuff came in the mail today. Um, Let's see what else happened today. I don't know, but I have to tell you, I am so excited for the Horror Hound Festival. Um, so Melissa and I were talking earlier, and the, well here, I'll pull in here and tell you, she texted me, and then I called her when I was leaving our dinner tonight. We went to this really good place for dinner tonight. For this Asian infusion place that Alex's aunt found. Can I not get through here? It was called the Odyssey and it was in Noblesville. Um, Melissa, oh, she's like, she's so funny. She's like, high probability of costume change tomorrow. And this is her <laughs> t shirt that she had. I don't know if you can see it. But it says, it says Boogeyman Club on it. <laughs> And then the other one is Michael. It has like all of the different characters. It has like Scream on it. I actually have a Scream t-shirt. It has all the different. Melissa has so many Halloween t-shirts and stuff like that. So anyway, okay, let me get this back into focus. Come on. It'll come back in just a second. But anyway... She said, okay, so saw panel is at two. Come on. Usually if I touch it, it'll come right back in. There. She said, okay, so saw panel is at two, screen panel three, then screen photo op 345. So those are the big things that we want to do. So Shawnee Smith, oh my God, I get to see her and that Tobin guy, whatever his name is. That's that too. So the panels are like the whole cast, Melissa said. And like the whole cast comes out and then they talk about like their experience, like filming the movie. So Saul, we're going to do that panel and then we're going to do the Scream panel, which you guys, I am like such a huge Scream fan. I've like seen every Scream movie. I know them by heart. <laughs> so Jamie Presley, who plays the friend, you know, that works in the video store, he's there. Nev Campbell, who plays the main part, is there. David Arquette, who plays the cop, is there. Rose McGowan, who was in the original, that played uh, Nev Campbell's best friend, is there. Um, that Lindley guy, who plays one of the killers, he's there. You know, the one that says, Leave her, live her alone, that one, he's there. Um, and then there's somebody else that's there from the cast. And there's also special guest stars, so some people might fly in at the last minute. So that is gonna be really, really cool. And then afterwards, there's like a photo op where you can get your picture taken with like all of the whole cast. Melissa said it's like 80 to $100. I'm like, 80 to $100 to get your picture taken with the whole cast? And she's like, yeah. I was like, um, 
I'm not really sure I care about all that. Like, I don't, I don't know that I need my picture taken with the cast of Scream, but I might too, so I don't know, we'll just see. She's like, yeah, but it's really cool, and they have like the memorabilia, and then they sign the picture for you, and all that kind of stuff, and I'm like, oh, that might be kind of cool, you know? And then she's like, you can go get signatures, and, and I knew that conventions were like this, but, because she's told me about the, the Horror Hound Festival before, and I know that like, drag con is like this, but she's like, you can buy their picture and then they'll give you an autograph like and you can like the picture costs something or the picture of the autograph costs something and and I'm like well how much does it cost like 10 bucks and she's like oh no and I was like well how much and she's like it just kind of depends and I go what do you mean and she goes well I paid 80 dollars for Kiefer Sutherland I said you did what she said I love Kiefer Sutherland I said Melissa you paid 80 dollars for an autograph and pay picture of Kiefer Sutherland, she started laughing. I was like, that is ridiculous. But she eats this stuff up. As do I, I'm really excited about going. And so, um, but I don't know that I'm gonna be paying all that kind of money. She said there's an entire vendor's room that has like, there's a whole room that's all like Halloween stuff, like not Halloween the movie, but like Halloween stuff, cause Halloween's coming up. And then there's a whole room that's like all vendor stuff that's like from movies. So be ready, I'll probably be buying a few things in there, I'm excited. And then um, I've actually had quite a few people that watch my videos that are like, I wanna meet up with you, blah, 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 blah whatever. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. It's, you know, it's what's really weird, especially on the heels of just talking about my social anxiety, is that I'm not like A, and maybe it's because it's something that I really want to do. I don't know. Maybe it's the more I'm talking about it. But A, I'm not nervous about going at all. And B, I'm not nervous about going by myself and meeting them there. Because Melissa was like, why don't you just drive down with us? And I was like, I'd rather just like meet you guys there. I said, because I want to have my car in case I want to leave and I don't want to stay, you know, whatever. And she was like, that's cool. So, um, but she was like, you know, she was like, feel free to, you know, drive down there if you want with us. And I was like, cause she knows, like, I don't like to walk into stuff on myself, but I'm like really not worried about it, which is strange for me, you know? So anyway, I don't know. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And then there's also this thing that Melissa and I are doing where uh, somebody tagged me. Oh, Mel, my the, the book club lady, my book club lady, my friend Mel. She tagged me on Facebook this um, Friday the 13th experience where they're opening the camp for one night in April. And you can have like this overnight experience with this tour and stuff. But they know that so many people are going to want to buy tickets that they're doing like a lottery system. So... It's actually a real camp. Did you guys know that? That's like open today. The camp where they filmed uh, Friday the 13th. I think that's kind of scary, actually. Oh. I keep on passing all of these McDonald's. And I want a cup of coffee. Is there some place else I could get a cup of coffee from? Well, Starbucks, but I don't want to drive through and pay for the Starbucks right now. That probably would make the most sense, though. Since, because I have my app. I wonder if the Starbucks is open down here. I just, to be honest with you, I don't really want... I just want kind of like a grande hot coffee is kind of what I want. I was like, what is ticking? And it's this water bottle. Do you guys remember that from back in the day whenever I bring this water bottle in the car? I rarely go to the Starbucks. I only go to the Starbucks up here if Tanya and I are together. I don't know if it's open. It's like four till six right now. Oh my God. It's, I just saw this place. It's gonna be um, future home of Humane Society. Okay, so we were at dinner tonight and I don't want to say this person's name on here just because it's actually somebody that I have, well, so, okay, so I'm sitting at dinner tonight, right, and the, our waitress comes up to us, and she said, she was really hilarious, and so we were, like, in this private room, okay, let me just put into perspective who it was, okay, 
it was me and Alex, Alex's mom and his abuela, and his Aunt Jackie and Uncle Ed, Carlos, Liliana, Liliana's sister, the kids, Alex's other uncle, and his daughter who's visiting from San Francisco, his cousin Nina, who was like in my very first vlog ever, and the kids, yeah who were running around, because we were in a private room, okay? So they're like running around the whole time, but they looked so cute. They have matching little shirts on that were like white with sailboats on it. So anyway, they play together so well. I think it's so nice. They're like the best of friends. And um, so anyway, the waitress comes in and she's like, <laughs> she said something like, how she dealt with us, as rowdy as this group was and as loud as we were, is beyond me. She was a saint. But anyway, and I was so hangry, I was almost, I was so hungry, I was almost hangry. Do you ever get like that? Like, we got there and then like everybody kind of like, we got there, of course, because my husband likes to get places early. We were there like 10 minutes early and everybody else was like, well, Alex's aunt and uncle were there like early too because they were the ones that booked the reservation. But everybody else showed up like a half an hour late and I'm like, I am so hungry. So anyway, our waitress came in who was fantastic and she was like, she said something like to Alex's cousin who was sitting to my right because we were catching up. She said something about like, I hear that you guys are the family of like a famous author or something. And like Alex is like, oh my God. And he was like grabbing my shoulder or whatever. And um, Alex's cousin Nina was like, she's talking about you. And I was like, no, I'm not anybody's famous author or whatever. And so she started laughing. She's like, yeah, like this young, she's kind of sarcastic and I didn't really realize it until later. And then I was like, okay, your humor is hilarious. So anyway, there was this waitress there that had like read my book and watched my videos and stuff. And um, super sweet. And let me just tell you, the thing that's really weird is I ran into her twice before too. Like like twice walking through a broader Red Bull. And um, so she came in and she was really sweet. She came in and she talked to me. But um, I was like, okay, you have to reach out to me for a specific reason because... Um, I have a little connection for her. She was so cool. She was absolutely the coolest in the entire world. But that connection is going to be like a video that I'm doing in October. So um, I don't want to talk about it on here yet because I want to wait. But I was like, so I'm doing this thing in October. You need to come with me. And she was like, okay. So I was like, she was so sweet. It was really exciting. And Alex is like, yeah, Peter always says that he never gets noticed in public. And it's always me. Because she said, she said, I saw you walk through to Alex. She's like, I saw you walk through. And I was like, that's Peter Mont's husband. See, it never, I never, nobody ever like knows that it's me. They always know it's Alex. I think that's so funny though. <laughs> she was so absolutely sweet though. Is it open? Is it open? It's like literally six o'clock. Are they? They are open. I can smell something being cooked in there. Do you know what I think is interesting is that they have all these good eats breakfast things, but like as progressive as Starbucks is that they don't have a vegetarian one. I mean, unless it's like a cheese damage. Hi, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get started for you today? Um, just, can I get a grande coffee? Just hot coffee? Yeah, of course. Can, a grande hot coffee? Yeah, can I get um, one equal on that as well? Yeah, of course. One equal. Already? Anything else for you today? Nope, that's it. Alrighty, I'll see you up here. Okay, thank you. My pleasure. I think she said already five times. Um, I wish I had my cup. I don't have my cup though. When you say a lot of words over and over and over again, like I do, <laughs> like I say this, I repeat the same words over and over and over again. Um, you notice when other people do the same thing. If you do this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like for every video that I do, I always like repeat the same words, you know, and um, like or something like that. 
It was funny that in my, um, what is this? In my, um, please tell me I have enough money on here. What do I do? In my video with Alex that I did, um, hold on a second. Hi. Hey, how are you? Great, how are you? Good. Would you like your receipt, sir? Uh, no, I don't need my receipt. Here I thought I was like right on time and you guys open at 5 a.m. That's early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, on the weekdays it's 4.30. Or it's oh my God, 4.30? 4 30? <laughs> my Lord, have a good day. Who needs coffee that early? She was so sweet, wasn't she? Um, in our video that we did together, Alex and I are um, in Las Vegas. So many people commented on how many times he said the word like, and you know what's funny is that I noticed that when I first started dating him, but like I kind of, for, <laughs> like I had like kind of forgotten because we've been together for so long that I don't really hear him say it anymore, you know? But when I was watching the video back, I was like, he does say it a lot. But I do too. I don't know if I should wear my hat today or if I should do my hair. <laughs> That's my big struggle of the day. <laughs> That's a big struggle, isn't it? And I really want some coffee, some of this coffee, but it's so hot. Well, since I went to a meeting, <laughs> I always get hot coffee at a meeting. Tani is so specific about how she makes her coffee, and so we always when we get to a meeting, she like you know makes her coffee and whatever, and um, I'm like in my head going off in a totally different thought pattern. But anyway, she like makes her coffee and like she has like so many sugar, so many cream, so many this. And then she sits there and she blows on it for like 20 minutes and just stirs it. <laughs> I'm like, girl, drink your coffee. <laughs> I was thinking about the fact that, so about five or, God, how long ago was this? Well, no, it was, it was when I came back in. So it was probably about seven, eight years ago when I hadn't been going to meetings for a while. My sponsor had been my sponsor forever. He was like really wanting me to get the feeling of what it was like to be a newcomer again. And, and he was like, Peter, everybody knows that you've been sober for a really long time and whatever. And he thinks that, and he said, I think it would be good for you to go to meetings that you've never been to before, you know? And humble yourself by like not saying like, I've been sober this amount of time, you know? And just sit in a meeting and just introduce yourself. And, um, but you're not allowed to like, in, in your share, like you either have to pass or, and passing means like if like it comes to you, you just go, I pass. Um, he said, you either have to pass or, you know, you have to act as if you don't, you can share whatever you want to share, but you can't say I have, you know, whatever amount of time, like at the time, like 17 or 18 years, right? He was like, you just have to pass or act like you don't have, like he's like, you can share what you want to share, but you can't say in your, what was at the end of it and didn't even realize it. He said, you can share what you want to share, but you can't just at the end of it, you know, say like, oh, and I've been sober this amount of time, whatever. And, um, so it was good for me because I started going to a lot of meetings where I didn't know people. And in the meetings, like, I wouldn't share, like, oh, I've been sober for such amount of time. And they didn't know how long I had been sober, right? Because I do think that you kind of, like, look at somebody different. Like, when I go to my home group, I mean, there's guys in there that have 40 years, 35 years, 30 years, you know? And I, I know, like, that they've sponsored, you know, half of the North Side and... I know how they work steps, and I know their stories and their struggles, and there is a amount of respect, you know, for the work that they've done in recovery. And um, if I went to a meeting and I didn't know them, 
and didn't see everybody saying hi to them and they just came in and sat down and I didn't know that they weren't just straight off the street you know what I mean like that this was their first meeting ever like it it would make me look at the whole situation differently and then you would be seeing the person as pure plus it would be humbling for them right so I was that was one of the things I had to do when I came back in was I had to start going to a lot of meetings well this was at about a year I guess back in I had to start going to a lot of meetings where I didn't know people at all and so I started going to a lot of candlelight meetings Two of the candlelight meetings that I went to were what we would refer to as skid row meetings. One was in a homeless shelter, um, and that was probably one of the best meetings that I ever went to in my entire life. Um, it was at 10.45 p.m., and it went to like, no, it was from 11.30 at, it was at 10.30, from 10.30 at night to 11.45, and then we would stand around afterwards for half an hour, like on the front porch and stuff, and, um, it was fantastic, you know, to realize, but for the grace of God, there go I. I mean, that that could be my life story. And to hear people say that, you know, like, they came to the meeting just because they wanted a cup of coffee or just because they wanted a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Well, let me tell you what was really interesting about these meetings, okay, that I realized very quickly. Because usually when I go to a meeting, like, I stop on the way and... Like I'll, I'll bring a bottle of water, like, you know, my bottle of water, or I'll stop and get, like, a fountain pop with Tanya or a cup of coffee or something. Um, but often, like, at my home group, I'll get, like, a cup of coffee. Well, I was going to these candlelights, and because they were candlelight meetings, I would stop on the way down there, and I would get a fountain pop, or I would get, you know, a cup of coffee or whatever. So I always came with whatever my drink was. Well, I was probably about two weeks into it, and I noticed that somebody brought a pot of coffee into the meeting and they said, um, so-and-so, they like said the person's name and they were like, so-and-so bought a pot of coffee for the meeting, so feel free to anybody that wants one can have one. And I was like, what does that mean? Somebody bought a pot of coffee for the meeting. Like, I didn't understand what it meant. And at this specific clubhouse, there was like a little canteen, like a little coffee shop, you know? Like when you would walk in, the coffee shop was to the left and then the meetings were to the right. And then, like, and when they said this, like, like, immediately, like, five people got up and got coffee. And then, like, another couple days went by and I was at a meeting and it was the same story. And, um, you know, when I go to a meeting, like, we donate money at the beginning because the meetings are fully self-supporting. And then from that amount of money that they make, okay, and let's just say if there's 40 or 50 people that go to my home group, I mean, we literally raise a ton of money every week, right? And so that goes towards the rent because we rent the space that we use from the church. And it goes towards, like, the group service, you know, organization and things like that. But there's ways that you split it that are written down. But then it also goes towards the coffee and the cups and things like the styrofoam cups and all that kind of stuff, right? Well... This meeting, these meetings that I was going to, were barely making enough money to pay rent, to rent the room. So, like, let's say if there are 10 people in a room, you pay $10 to rent the room. Does it make sense? And it's just to prove that you're fully self-supporting. Well, if you have 10 people, and only two of those 10 people can actually donate a dollar or 50 cents, you're not going to have enough money for rent. So then you have to borrow the money from the week before, which means... A lot of these Skid Row meetings were in the hole. Like, they had no money to pay their own rent. So, there was nobody buying coffee at these meetings, right? And I remember sitting there and I thinking to myself, this thing that I have taken for granted for almost 20 years of my sobriety, that I go to a meeting and there's a pot of coffee. Not a pot of coffee, but huge, okay? A huge, big thing of coffee with like a little tap on the bottom of it. Decaf and regular at every meeting that I go to. The fact that there's these huge coffee things, free coffee there. You can have as much coffee as you want. You know, our home group meeting that we go to, the women from the church donate cookies. There's like all these cookies there every week when we go, you know? And all this time, like, you know, I've kind of taken it for granted. It made me look at things like coffee or a peanut butter sandwich. You know, I had this guy one time in a meeting say at this homeless shelter, because they had like 
a little kitchen right there, and he would come, and he would, the first thing he would do is make himself a peanut butter sandwich, you know, and he said, um, the thing that got me started coming to this meeting was that I had, I was so, he didn't live there, and he was just like, I was so hungry, and the only meal I was getting a day was a peanut butter sandwich if I came to a meeting here, so I was coming to a meeting just so I could get a peanut butter sandwich, and I just remember thinking that, you know, or hearing that, and being like, so full of grace, you know, and gratitude, or full, so full of gratitude about for a cup of coffee or a peanut butter sandwich, you know, it just really put things in perspective for me. I think it's one thing to say that we can really, you know, like, I feel really bad for people where I really, you know, pull this or I understand, you know, whatever. I don't think we really do, most of us, unless we've been there, you know? And as tough as things have gotten for me in my life, I mean, things have gotten really pretty tough for me, you know? Um, I know there's a lot of people that don't think that, but um, things have gotten really, really tough for me. And although my father and I, I've told this story on here before, but after I got sober, we had a conversation where he wasn't going to, like, help me financially whatsoever, and he hasn't in, you know, 23 years of my sobriety. Um, that's kind of a foundation for our sobriety, is that my father doesn't give me any money or help me. And, um, that being said, I also know that if tomorrow I was homeless, that my dad and my stepmom wouldn't allow myself or Alex and I to be homeless. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, and if it was, now I will tell you that if it was the result of drugs and drinking, absolutely he would. He would have no problem whatsoever. I think it would tear him up inside. I think it would absolutely tear my father up inside to know that I wasn't sleeping somewhere sla safe and I didn't have food on my table. But he was so done. And then, and I just, you know, I think if tomorrow I picked up, I think my dad would be like, I'm done with you. Don't ever contact me again. I think he couldn't go through it anymore, you know? At that time, like my dad was... You know, they say that anger is a secondary emotion and that it's really hiding, like, hurt and pain and things like that. I think my dad just was so confused and scared for me and angry. Um, but intelligent enough to know to be angry at the disease, but having a hard time separating the disease from me. You know, I mean, he did have a hard time with all of that, I think. And he did his best, but he wasn't going to continue to enable it. He just wasn't, you know? And so, do I believe that he let me go homeless today if it was just a matter of circumstances, you know? No, I don't think that he would. Well, I know he wouldn't, you know, if it was a situation where... Well, I can tell you what he would do. He wouldn't, like, dole me out money to pay my bills. It, like, the, day, the days of my father giving me any cash ended when I was, you know, 23. When we sat down and had the conversation. And, um which has been the foundation for our sobriety. You know, it's interesting because I've told this story on here a, a numerous amounts of times about that, um, you know, when I was growing up, my dad and I, we had a, a relationship that was very much bounded by um, uh, my dad giving me money or my dad buying me nice things or buying me things, you know, that I wanted or whatever. And, um, so when I got sober, my dad and I, well, I talked to my sponsor about it. I had this sponsor. It's, it's, it's funny in retrospect, but it's not any advice that I would give anybody. Um, I had totaled my car, you know, driving, um, I totaled my car the last night that I was driving. I went and so anyway, put it in this ditch and it was undrivable after that. So I needed a car and um, I was talking to my sponsor and I was like serious. Like I was really serious about this whole thing, you know? And um, my dad, so I told the sponsor, I said, and we had done a lot of work on my relationship with my dad and how I, um, you know, like my dad and I had always had this relationship that was built on money. And my dad being able to do things for me or buy me things or whatever, you know? Or rescue me out of situations. And so, at about six months sober, 
maybe. I don't, I, I don't really, in all honesty, remember how long it was. But I talked to my sponsor about it, and he said, you need to have a conversation with your dad about um, him giving you money and that he can't continue to do that if you guys are going to have a relationship. And um, I was like, okay. And he was like, you need to tell your dad he can't give you money anymore, that you don't want that to, you don't want your relationship to be about money. And then that's when the relationship will start to change, you know? And I'm like, okay, but I need a car. Like, and I had no resources to buy a car. Like, none whatsoever. So, I went with my dad. And we got a new car. And I got a new sponsor. And then, I had a conversation with my dad. You know, and I sat down. And, um, I mean, it's funny in retrospect. And I share that in meetings. And people laugh. Because they know that that's how we're, you know, very gamey with things. Especially in early sobriety. But I need it. I, I don't look back on that and think like, okay, I shouldn't have done that or whatever, you know. I am glad that I had, and that car that I got, I also, just to put this in perspective, I had that car for the next, I think it was like 10 or 11 years. Like, that car lasted me a while. Um, but I sat down with my dad. I'll never forget that conversation. And we sat down. I said, I can't take money from you anymore. And he said, okay. And we, I mean, he was like, are you serious? And I said, yeah, I'm serious. He goes like, this won't, we won't be changing back. And he was like, you know, um, and he hasn't, you know, he hasn't changed back in all this time. And there's been a, a few occasions, like after my mom's death, when I couldn't work during the week of her funeral, there's been a few situations that my dad has helped me, but I have paid him back every cent. Um, it's really highly offensive when people come on my videos, whenever I share this story, and they say, you're a trust fund baby, and you blah, blah, blah. Okay, in all honesty, I wish I was a trust fund baby. I wish I had a million dollars sitting out there um, that I could just take from whenever I wanted, and all this kind of stuff, but that just really isn't the case. And, um, you know, the thing is, is that I got something that I never would have had. And, I, you know, and like, I have to say when, when I first used to talk about it on this video, on these videos, and then people would come and they would go, oh, Peter's a liar, and Peter this, and blah, 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 whatever, and Peter's a trust fund baby, and whatever, people that don't even have any clue about my situation whatsoever, which I would, like, love to get my dad on video just for that reason alone, for him to go, yeah, and just, like, laugh his ass off about that statement. Um, my dad, at 23 and a half years sober, like me being that long sober, wouldn't even give me $20 in cash for a birthday present. No lie. No lie. Okay? Seriously. So, my father isn't doling me out any kind of money. I trust that. Um, like, he will buy me a gift, but never does he give me cash. And if he ever, like the times that he has helped me out financially, um, that I have had to pay him back, like, we have had, like, a written agreement. Like, he takes it very, very seriously because he knows that my sobriety is, like, reliant upon that. But, you know, like, at the first couple times I shared that story on here, which I'm proud of that story, you know? I'm proud of the fact that my dad and I have this amazing relationship today that we wouldn't have if it wasn't as a result of me continuing to take money from him. And then people come in there and they want to say something that's cruel and they go, oh, well, Peter's a trust fund baby and that's not true and blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, well, first of all, um, I wish I was, okay? I wish I was some you know, one of the rich kids of Beverly Hills or whatever it is, but that's just not the case. I don't even really, to be honest with you, know if I really would want it to be that way. I don't know. I feel differently about it now that I did that because the thing that comes with it is, you know, when you pay your own bills, first of all, no, you don't answer to anybody. You, though, you know, you have your own money. And that was one of the things that I was given as a, you know, was I was given my own sense of integrity, which I think is what my father wanted me to have. You know, um, I feel very blessed that there's been situations like, okay, when I, like, we've talked a lot about the debt on here that I had, that I got out of, right? Like, when I went to my dad and I talked to him about my debt, he was like, you know, I could go in and I could write you a check, like, two to three times out of debt and you and Alex could have a great life. He said, but I know that you're not going to learn anything from that. And so he goes, let me help you with some resources and figuring things out. He was the one, I think, at the time that talked to me about Dave Ramsey and talked to me about some other suggestions, you know, and whatever, and what helped me get out of, like, paying off my debt. That is how my father has helped me through the years, you know? 
and giving me the resources and being a teacher to me and teaching me things about how to get out of debt, not just taking me out of debt, you know? And it is frustrating at times. I have friends of mine, I was just talking to another friend of mine about this today. I have friends of mine that get five and ten thousand dollars of cash at Christmas time. You know, I have a friend of mine that she gets a hundred thousand dollars every I think it's like I think you can gift somebody up to a hundred thousand dollars every year. So she gets like ninety nine five or something every year for Christmas from her dad. And she's like, Yeah, well he just wants me to have it now before he dies and I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can you imagine how that would make your life different? But you know the thing is, is that I would never in a million years um, trade in the relationship that I have built with my dad, the trust that I have earned back, um, the integrity that I have today, the value of a dollar that I have learned. The, I mean, it was hard for me, you guys. I mean, I, you know, the, the only other thing I had financially as far as money coming in before I got sober was my dad giving me money and dealing drugs, okay? And let me just tell you, both of those were pretty lucrative. <laughs> so when I went and I can remember like my first paycheck working in treatment, I was like making at the time like six ten an hour or something, I think. I remember seeing that paycheck and it was like for $442 or something like that. My windshield is getting fogged up or something. Real quick, hold on. My first paycheck was for like 400 something. And I can remember looking at that paycheck and thinking to myself, I could have made this in an hour. And, but you know what? Like I had earned it. I had made that money, you know? I was so proud of myself and it was honest money and there was something about that to me, you know? I don't really care if people make those statements today. I have learned um, in doing YouTube, especially this channel, that there are so many people that for some reason, I have no idea why, really don't like me, and they're gonna believe what they're gonna believe, and it is not my job to convince them otherwise. So, I'll just keep on coming on here and telling my stories, and people can believe what they wanna believe, but. You know, I have friends of mine that are trust fund kids. I have friends of mine that... I have a friend of mine, I mean, I have a couple friends of mine that have inherited money that would just blow your mind. I mean, I'm talking 50 to 100 million dollars. Not, I'm not even lying to you. You know, I have a friend of mine who her father invented this like crazy thing, which I don't even want to like get into on here at all. So, but and she was an only child and she inherited a ridiculous amount of money. And you would like some of my friends, I think you would kind of know, but the majority of them that are like trust fund people, you would never know. Like they don't live their lives like that. Sure. They take nice trips and stuff like that. And they probably, you know, they don't work or they've started small little businesses and stuff like that. But the majority of them are pretty humble and you know, they don't live in like, you know, $3 million mansions. They live in, you know, affordable little houses and, you know, not, not little houses, but they, you know, $250,000 houses with whatever. And they have like nice lives. They just don't worry about stuff financially. But if my status ever changes, like my status, if you like my status and I become a trust fund baby, <laughs> trust me, I'll let you know. <laughs> coffee is good. I haven't had hot coffee from Starbucks in a long time. Although I have to say that my um, favorite hot coffee is from the gas station. Just like start, uh, not Speedway though. I'm trying to think of which gas station it is. It's funny because my dad always is like looking for something different to get Alex and I for Christmas, you know? And, um, like our birthdays that because like he won't give us cash right so he's always looking for something that is like new and different but like we like what do we need we don't need anything and a couple years ago and he usually gets this like matching stuff you know I don't don't ask me why but like if he'll get like Alex you know it's always something like from like that Hamakul or Schlimler or like the Sharper Image, you know, those kind of stores. So like, if he'll get us those, 
what did he get us a couple years ago? Alex loved them, and I was like, I can't, what, why did he give us these? Those sunglasses that you see on TV that you can see, like, guys, like, behind, like, you know, like, those military sunglasses. He got us each a pair of those, and, like, sweaters. And then my stepmom always, like, puts together, like, little packages of stuff. She's real nice, but, um, so, like, two years ago for our birthdays or Christmas, he got us matching watches. I have no clue why, you guys. These leather band matching watches. And I'm just like, you know, I like, it's, I love watches, but it's not the kind of watch that I would wear because it's leather band. And literally, Alex wears his all the time, and he gets compliments on it all the time. People are like, where did you get your watch? Where did you get your watch? Seeing Alex's relationship with my dad is really cool, you know? And, um just to see them like t text each other and joke and they have kind of the same we were talking about this tonight Alex and I that he and my dad have the same sense of humor they're very sarcastic um and but they get each other you know I don't know you know my mom used to always tell me that She'd be like, I always wanted to give you another brother or sister, but your dad didn't want more kids. She would always say that to me. I, like, in retrospect now, I have no idea how much of what my mom told me was true because there's a lot of things that she didn't tell me about, like, my grandma and stuff like that, right? But I see my dad, you know, like, with my cousins or, like, on his side, or I see my dad with, like, Alex, and it's like, I wonder if my dad wouldn't have loved to have had, like, five kids. You know what I mean? My dad is like was great with me like when I was younger like he was a great dad for a kid and and even in high school too and then like he didn't really know what to do with me around the time that I got like sober and I was like messed up and like like college time like he didn't know what to do with me like at that age and then when I got older like our relationship started building again but there was it was a lot of it that was like you know ruined because of the trust of the addiction and stuff like that and then as I grew, you know, from that, it was like my dad, again, like, was great at having an adult relationship with me. Like, he knew how to do that. Um, so, it's interesting seeing, you know, like, I don't know. I always thought that he would have, you know, I would have a little brother or sister with my stepmom, but... That'd be weird, like, so she is 12 years older than me, so if she had had a baby, when I was at the end, while I was trying, I was attempting to do math, so if she had a baby when I was 12, I don't even know, I can't figure it out, I'd be old now, but I was saying to Carlitos tonight, I said, Carlitos, okay, he was, it was this this was the sweetest moment of our dinner tonight, right? Carlitos did the Pledge of Allegiance for all of us because he has to do it now for like, the last time that, well, one of the last times we were hanging out, he was like learning it because he was doing it for morning announcements. But he did it very proudly today. It was so cute. Apparently he does it for the announcements every morning. And um, it was really sweet. So. Liliana's, like, doing stuff with the school now. Like, she's, like, one of those parents that, like, works in the school or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, she goes in there for, like, the classroom and stuff like that. Like, with him and helps him or something. I don't know what she does. But she's, like, he gets so excited when he sees me, like, you know, like, at lunch and recess and whatever. And, and I was, like, that's so sweet that, like, because she's always posting pictures and stuff on Facebook of like, like they'll take him, like Sebastian and Liliana, <laughs> well Sebastian, not really, but that they'll take him like McDonald's for lunch, right? And like he'll be sitting there eating like, you know, chicken fingers on like mom visit day or whatever. And I'm like, isn't that so sweet that that's how he is now? Like, you know, it's just a couple of years before he's like, mom, don't come to school and visit me. You're bugging me. You know what I mean? We lose that. I think it's sad, but we can't keep it forever, I guess. really ever remember my wanting my mom or my dad to be at school a whole lot. I 
can remember being thankful when my mom wasn't the chap the chaperone. You know what I mean? I never wanted her to be the chaperone or the classroom mom or whatever with the cupcakes and all that kind of stuff. You can tell it's becoming fall because look, it's 6.32 and the sun has not come up, which is not typical of my vlogs that I get up late. So if I get home at seven, I'll have plenty of time to do stuff. This is where I get into a trap though, because then I'm like, well, I'm just gonna lay back down for an hour. And then I lay back down and I wake up and it's two o'clock and I'm like, shit. Damn it, I missed the whole whore round festival. I'd be so mad if I did that. I have a t-shirt that says Scream. I have this, like the Drew Barrymore and Scream. And then I have Michael Myers. But I don't think that t-shirt will fit me. I'm probably just gonna end up wearing a black t-shirt and that. I'm so excited. So what did I do today? So I woke up today. What is today? Friday. I woke up today and I had a sobriety commitment earlier today that I had to meet up with some people. And then I left there and I went and did a review um, of the pumpkin chai, pumpkin spiced chai from Starbucks. It was very good. And then, um, what else did I do? I could do my Dunkin' Donuts review right now and then I would have my review video done for the day. Oh my God, what should I get from the Dunkin' Donuts? People love the Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I just say though, that drink was really good that I got from there. believe that you guys in just a couple hours I'm gonna be at Horror Hound Festival. I'm so excited. The sky is so pretty. It's like black and then it's like I don't know if you can see it over here. Do you see that? <laughs> Those treat lip bombs you guys are the Bombalicia that I reviewed on my review channel. They are so good. I keep on forgetting that today is Saturday and it's like so busy outside. So I did that and then I came home. I did something else. Ran to the post office. Did my review, did my review, ran to the post office. What else did I do? I don't remember. Ran a couple other errands. And then, um, why is this person, oh, are they going straight? They turn in. And then I came home. <laughs> and then I came home and I filmed videos. And then I, um, I, then I, uh, I'm just thinking about what booktube video I was gonna make, and if you couldn't tell what I was doing. And is this gas station open? I kind of want an orange juice or something. Is it open? I'm like, bit, it is open. I'm gonna get an orange juice. Or maybe just a water. I need something. This water is warm down here. This coffee is too cold, too hot. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, they're not open. But he wanted to explain to me everything about why they weren't open without opening for me. <laughs> I don't know why. He was like unlocking the ice machine. He was like, we're not open. And I'm like, okay, what time do you open? He was like, seven. 6.40. I was like, okay. He was like, you can come back at seven. I'm like, <laughs> Duh, I know that. And uh, he's like standing in the doorway. And then they came out and like unlocked the ice machine. Anyway, I have my coffee, I guess that's all I need. This little um, 
So I'm in Noblesville right now. This little, uh, what do you call it, building right here, this little brick building is so cute. What a good morning to be alive. When I first got sober, well, this was my second sponsor actually. And um, I kind of tell that other story kind of fast, like I got a new car and then I got a new sponsor. It didn't just happen like that. My first sponsor, there was like, he didn't work steps. Um, he just was give it, gave me advice. Like he didn't really work a program. I needed somebody that worked a program, obviously. That's why I got my second sponsor who um, was the husband of you know a friend of mine that I ended up also working with. And um, he was the one that I've told a story about with balance where I was like in a meeting and I was like, oh, I have great balance in my life. And he was like, I have no balance whatsoever, right? So anyway, sadly he ended up dying of a heroin overdose. So my second sponsor passed away. Um, of a heroin overdose. Not while he was sponsoring me, but it, it doesn't matter, but he was a great guy. And, um, left behind a beautiful little girl who's now a young lady. Seems so strange to me that she had just been, she was like a year old, so she's probably like 25 and a half now. It's crazy to me. And, um, he was a great man, taught me many things. But he used to always say to me, he would call me in the morning, he would say, do you have your bed made? <laughs> I could hear him in my head. And he'd say, uh, do you have your bed made? And I'd say, yep, got my bed made, Steve. Got that pot of coffee made? Yeah, got that pot of coffee made. And then he would say, okay, let's read the daily reflection together and we would read it on the phone together. I feel so blessed to have met like so many wonderful people, you know, in sobriety that have just really, in life, and not just sobriety, in life. We would read the daily reflection together, so, you know, I read these meditation books on my meditation channel, but there's like meditation books that are specific to certain 12-step programs, right? Um, Alcoholics Anonymous has one, you know, Narcotics Anonymous has one, and, um, I don't really read those as much today. I know I have friends of mine that have been sober for 40 years and they still read them every day. But like they're very specific to addiction. Like getting through the day without having like, I don't know, I just don't feel like I'm right there all the, the time. They're still beautiful. But like they're called 24 hour a day books and they really, really helped me my first year to three years, four years of sobriety. Like, I literally read them every day. And um, that's where I started, like, with the meditation books, you know? And then my dad and my stepmom gave me a couple of them. One of my favorite meditation books, I never read it on my channel, but it's, like, called something like Women in Recovery. But it's not called that. It's called something like... Because they're always called something else, and then underneath it, it's called something. So it's called something like, We Find Grace. I don't, I'm just making it up. But it's called something like, We, we Find Grace, and underneath it, it says, like, Women in Recovery One Day at a Time. Well, they bought it for me. My dad and my stepmom didn't know that it was for Women in Recovery. But it's, like, one of my favorite books, right? And, um, so... They bought me a couple. My mom and I always gave them to each other. You know, Alex's friend gave me the Daily Book of Positive Quotations for, uh, I still think that was like one of the coolest gifts ever. 
At the time, I thought it was kind of funny. Like, I can't remember what he bought Alex, but he bought Alex something and he bought me something for our, like, bachelor party, for our wedding. And he was like, I just know how much these mean to you. And I thought it was kind of interesting that he bought that for me, right? And then, like, it's, like, to this day, I think about that. Like, I think about how thoughtful that was, you know? That, I mean, I, I know this guy. I know him well. He was one of Alex's, like, close three other college friends because Alex was, like, poor part of, like, four guys that were, like, really good friends in college, but, like, he doesn't live here today, and, like, we don't talk, and I think about, like, he really thought that gift through, you know, it says a lot about him as a person, I think, and, um, you know, it was interesting, I was telling Melissa, I was, like, when I was talking about the chili on here, you know, with her, and I got a couple comments that people were, like, the fact that Melissa does that with the chili really says a lot about who she is as a person, you know, and I said to Melissa, I said, you know, it's, it's very similar to Tanya. Like, when I was growing up, Tanya was the recovery, like, house. Like, everybody came to Tanya's house. And she was, had just worked. I mean, I don't even think, in, in retrospect, like, I really... I'll talk about Melissa in a second. But I, I don't think, in retrospect, like, I really... honored or respected Tanya in the way. I mean, she would literally, like, Eric was at work, you know, and he would come home late. And Tanya would work, you know, literally eight to, eight to six every day. She was the only one running that kennel with, like, one other girl, two other girls. So, eight to six every day, Sunday through Sunday, and then she's, well, shorter hours on Sunday, but you know, every, she was there, and she'd have to go back in there at 10.30, you know, 10 or 10.30 at night, or 8 o'clock, whatever, to let the dogs back out again. So she's there, you know, 12 hours a day, and then she'd come home, she'd feed Nick, and, you know, do his homework and stuff with him, and then go into a meeting, sponsoring girls left and right, and make a full dinner, and then whenever I was over there, there was always, whether it was me or, you know, three, you know, women in recovery, she was feeding somebody, ordering pizzas or doing book work or having somebody sit over here, and, you know, there was always three people sitting out on the back patio, smoking cigarettes, talking recovery. She did that for so long, you know, and I look at that, and I think... I don't know how she did it. Like, I really don't know how she did it. It would have been a lot for me, you know? She did. She juggled all of it fantastically. Such a great mom, you know? Raised one of the most amazing young men in the entire world. And, um... She just is really, you know, I'm so proud of her and her husband. They've taught me so much. You know, but like I was talking about that with Melissa. It was like when I said on here about Melissa making three kinds of chili. She makes me the vegetarian chili and then a small little thing. And then she makes Aaron the ones without beans. And then she makes everybody else the kind that has meat in it, right? How nice that is. And people were like, that really says a lot about Melissa. That is who Melissa is at her core. Like, that's not just about being a host. I mean, that is who Melissa is. She, whatever she does, she does because she wants to make somebody happy or comfortable, you know? Like, she knew I really wanted to go to this thing this weekend, and she was, like, trying to figure out any way possible, and she was like, you know, you should do this, you should do that, let me call this person, let me call that person. I mean, Melissa is that person. You know, she goes out of her way to make everybody in her life happy, and, um... And never bats an eye. I said that to her, like, at dinner. I said, oh, people thought that was so nice that you, you did that. They said it really spoke of who you were as a person. She was like, oh. Like, she won't even take the compliment. I'm like, Melissa, just take the compliment. I think it's nice. Like, I think, and Alex was like, it is. Melissa, you're so good to us when you do that stuff. And she was like, oh, my God, it's not that big of a deal. You know, it kind of is a big deal. Like, I know a lot of my friends that would, like, complain and, you know, bitch and moan about the fact that they had to make three different kinds of chili. Not to mention chocolate chip cookies, sugar cookies shaped like pumpkins, you know, all of the makings for the chili, you know, garlic bread, muffins, corn muffins. I mean, she makes everything that anybody possibly would like on the side of it. And I'm ready for that Halloween dinner again, so. <laughs> oh. Tonight when we went out to dinner... Um, so Alex's cousin is vegan and, you know, I'm vegetarian. This restaurant that we went to actually had, like, a really extensive, like, vegetarian menu. It was really great. Um, I got pineapple fried rice and it came in a pineapple, you guys. It was so cool. Like, it came in, like, a half of a huge pineapple. Anyway, okay, I hate tofu. 
I can't stand tofu. I think it's disgusting. I don't want any part of it. Well, Alex's cousin loves tofu. So she got this Buddha's Delight, but she got it with like fried tofu. And so I tried some of it. It was so good, you guys. I was, I was like, well, maybe I do like tofu. And she was like, Nina was like, see, Peter, you, you'll like it if it was made the correct way. And they made it really, really good. And I had a ginger salad that was absolutely delicious with avocado in it. <clears throat> and then Alex and I split with his mom um, a vegetarian roll. They had really good sushi there, too. God, it was really great. But this restaurant, Asian Infusion, and it was called, if you're on the north side of Indianapolis, Odyssey. I was really, it was beautiful inside, too. Was really good. And then Nina brought a cake that was some kind of vegan birthday cake that she'd gotten like a Trader Joe's or someplace like that. It was beautiful. This birthday cake was beautiful for his grandma. So they brought that out at the end. It was fun. We had a great time. Mm. Then after that, we went over to his Aunt Jackie and Uncle Ed's. And um, they got like a year ago, they got this Jack, or they got this, uh, what do you call it? Puppy, their old dog's name was Jack. They got, um, shoot. Oh, I'm like in my head thinking golden retriever. What's the dogs that like are police dogs? I just was talking to Ed about this tonight. Oh my God, anyway, he was a puppy. They got this new dog and he was a puppy and now he is like ginormous. But this is gonna drive me crazy that I can't think of what kind of dog it is. It's a police dog. Oh, shoot. It, well, it's not a golden retriever. You guys know what I'm talking about? They look like wolves. Why can't I think of what these are? My mother was terrified of them. My dad had one growing up. Um. I don't know why I can't think of the name of this stupid dog, but anyway. Um, German Shepherd. The German Shepherd. And um, so he comes bolting through the house. But anyway, Ed and Jackie's house, like we, like we go over there for holidays and stuff like that, but it's always so cozy. And we were sitting around the living room and it's so clean. Like Jackie's house is spotless, right? And it's a really nice house. And so Ed was like in the backyard and he made like this fire pit. Like in, he has like a fire pit out there. So he made like a fire in the fire pit. But he left the back door open because he had like this really nice patio that goes out there. And um, and it smelled so good. And then he had bought like, he does all like the plant work and like the landscaping around the house and stuff like that. It is not this bright. I know it looks that bright, but it is not that bright. Like, why is this camera like fool, fool people? It like looks like it's that bright and it's still like dark outside. But anyway, he had these huge mums on his kitchen counter like when we walked in, I kept on putting my face into them. They smelled so good. Oh, you know what? I wanted to go by Kroger and see if they had some of those. Because he said he bought them at Kroger like a month ago. These, I love mums. Do you guys love mums? Oh my God. They smelled so good. And um, so, and then they had his pumpkin candles lit. And it just was so comfy. And we were just sitting there. And Alex and I were sitting next to the couch, next to each other on the couch. I had my like head on his shoulder. And the kids were playing. And, um, <laughs> Alex's brother like went back in the recliner and like fell asleep and like his grandma was opening all of her presents for her birthday. It just was so nice, you know, and um, we sat outside with Ed for a little bit next to the fire and watched the dog. Or was the dog inside by that point? I think the dog had run back inside by that point. I don't know, but it was so nice outside. It just was such a fun night, you know, it was so cozy and nice and family. I love nights like that. So anyway. Well, listen, I think that I'm going to get off here now. Um, I actually vlogged longer than I thought I was going to. And it is... Oh, I'm looking at the... It is, yeah, I'm, it's time to get off here. <laughs> so I can start getting my day ready. Um, but I hope you guys are having a fantastic...
Saturday, unless you have other plans. But like I always say, don't have other plans. Make the most of your day. Enjoy your day. Do something different today. If you're at Whorehound Festival today, come up and say hi to me. I will probably be in a black t-shirt and this hat or um, my hair done, which I had my hair done earlier today. Hi, hi hair. Can we talk about this hairdo? <laughs> Anyway, come up and say hi to me, and um, yeah, I love you guys. Oh, what else do I usually say on here? I, have I forgotten it so soon? And if nobody else has told you this today, oh, but anyway, make the most of your Saturday. Do something fun today. Do something different. I am, and I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. I'm stepping outside of my comfort zone. In the past, this is something I would never have done. I would have been too afraid to do, so I'm glad that I'm doing this. And... Um, what else? Yeah, and if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Make sure, I love you. Make sure that you look at yourself every single day in the mirror and say, I love you, I love you. And that you tell yourself positive affirmations about yourself and good things that you want to come true, good things that you want to believe about yourself, good things that you do believe about yourself. And um, if you believe them, they will come true eventually. And, uh, or if you tell yourself enough, you will believe them and then they will come true. And most importantly, pass it on to somebody else and let them know how important they are to you. And um, there are people out there that don't get to hear that ever from anybody and don't get to hear positive things. And um, the only way that we can cancel out the negative things is by letting people know the positive things. So anyway, I love you guys and um, I will see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye. Love ya. <laughs>